So as before, to match any character for itself, that is to change the meaning of the character. As we were saying earlier, the dot character means any character. It can match any character. But suppose we want to change and say, well, I just want to match the dot character itself. Then as before, we have to escape it. But uh, in a regular expression, you have to escape it with two backslashes, not one backslash. Okay, That is because uh, the backslash itself has to be escaped first because it has its own meaning in, in the context of a string. So you have to escape the backslash and you have to escape the, the dot as well. So you put, whenever you need to use a backslash as the escape character, use two backslashes. Right. So in this case, uh, suppose we've got uh, the strings ABC and A dot C and we want to match the, match the dot as it is and BEF and we want to match anything that has an A followed by a dot followed by a C. Right? So this should match only A dot C. Right? So that's what this regular expression will achieve. And so it shows all of these and shows that only the middle one matches. So whenever we need to use the backslash uh, or any of the special characters in their uh, non-special or regular meaning, then we use double backslash. Okay? So uh, if you have X is uh, A backslash backslash B and right lines X, then uh, it will give a, you know, the, the match will be just this, but of course that's, that is this match. That is match any string that contains the backslash character. Right? So if you want two backslashes, uh, which is this string has two backslashes and of course that means that it's got one backslash. Okay, But we want to match this string, so we have to put two backslashes for each of those backslashes. Okay? So in any case, general idea is if your a regular expression requires one backslash to two. Okay, so now we want to uh, use what are called as anchors. That is, we want to let's say find any string that starts with something or ends with something. Remember, till now all the regular expressions we have used simply say, well, if this pattern occurs anywhere in the string, right? Doesn't matter where it occurs. It can happen at the beginning, the end, the middle. Anywhere it doesn't matter, it matched. But suppose we are looking for specific things like I want to find only those strings where this particular pattern occurs at the beginning or at the end or something else occurs at the beginning and something else occurs at the end. So those are what are called as anchors. So once again, we've got the string apple, banana, pear and we are saying show me all the strings, str underscore view, x, show me all the strings that begin with an A. That is the caret character when it occurs right in the beginning of a regular expression says, well, that's the start of the string, right? So clearly, this is going to match only apple because that's the only thing in which A occurs right in the beginning. In the other two strings, A occurs, but not right in the beginning. It's not the first character, right? So if you put the caret character right in the beginning, uh, that means I want, uh, you know, that's the start of the whole string itself. So if you did that, obviously the answer is going to be apple. It just matches that because that's the only string in which A occurs right in the beginning. Right? And the dollar correspondingly stands for the end of a string. So this says, show me all strings in which uh, the strings that end with a dollar. Right? So the, the caret says beginning with and the uh, uh, dollar says ending with. Okay? So that means A occurs and then that's the end of the string. Or the beginning and A occurs right here. So in this case, it's going to match a banana because that's the only one which ends with an A. And if you put just an A, then that will show you all strings in which an A occurs anywhere and that's all three of them. I haven't shown that example. Okay, so here you can search for uh, strings that contain an apple, in which case contain the string apple, in which case all of them will be matched, or strings that begin with apple to match the first two, strings that end with apple, it will match the next two. Okay, so you can see that. So, uh, contain apple, all of them, beginning with apple, first and second, ending with apple, second and third. Okay, so that's this apple, they're all there. And, uh, and also strings that begin with apple and end with apple, which means only the middle one. Uh, only the, this, the first one in this example, right, because we said X. And X is this. <clears throat> okay, so this is applying to that particular string. Okay, so you get the idea of what happens.
Okay, so now just for practice, uh, for regular expressions, there is a words data set that's already available in Stringr. Right? Stringr is the package that we've already loaded, and that contains a built inbuilt data set called words, and we can use that to practice regular expressions, right? Because that's a large list. Till now, we've been working with toy lists like apple, banana, pear, consisting of just three strings, uh, but uh, this words contains many strings. Okay, so within that words data set, it contains, I think, about 800 words or so. Within that, we want to find all the words that begin with a Y. Now, because we are dealing with a large data set, if we just did str, str view words Y, because earlier, remember, it was showing us all the strings, and then it was highlighting whichever strings had any match, right? So if a string had no match, the string simply appeared. Now, we cannot afford to do that because our word, uh, our main list of words is pretty big. So we want to see only the matching words. We don't want to see the other words. So that's why we are saying match equals true. Right? Show me only those that match. Those that don't match, just ignore them. Okay? So if you did that, you'll see only words that begin with Y. And if you did this, you'll see words that end with X. Okay, let's just go in and run those, uh, those lines of code here. Okay, so here we are. STR view words. Okay, so those are the words in your words data set that begin with a Y, and these are the words that end with an X. Okay, so that's that's easy. So then we want to see words that are at least three characters long, at least three characters long. Of course, one way to do that is uh, str underscore length greater than equal to three. We could do that, or we could do it with a regular expression, that is, any strings in which dot 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 because remember dot matches any character so so long as dot 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 pattern is contained in the string we know that it's got a length of at least three could be more and again we are saying match equals true show me only those that match right in this case uh, i would suspect that if you run it you will still get too many uh, too many results right so that's what this is you'll see the page fills up right and this viewer is a very simple viewer it doesn't allow uh, scrolling and so on. So there are these that you're seeing here, but uh, there are many, many more. Okay. And again, notice that it's showing you only the first match. Right? It, ob obviously, ABLE uh, should match ABL, should also match BLE. And absolute should match ABS, PSO, SOL, OLU, and uh, LUT and UTE. There are so many matches, but we are seeing only the first match. By default, that's how it works exactly three characters long that's interesting right because this is somewhere it contains three characters exactly three characters it starts has three characters and it ends so that's the words which are exactly three characters long okay, so once again let's just run it and see what's going on okay so those are the words which have exactly three characters once again uh, the list is too big to fit onto the screen here. So you're seeing that it continues, but this is a simplistic one. It doesn't have any uh, scroll bars. Okay, earlier we saw anchors, which is to match uh, beginning uh, of the string, something that occurs at the beginning or something that occurs at the end, or something that occurs at the beginning and at the end and so on. So those are called anchors, which match the beginning and end. Now let's look at another concept in regular expression called expressions called character classes. That is, in other words, we want to say, uh, I want to put in something that matches any alphabet, right? So dot, remember, we used a dot, but dot matched any character. It would match an alphabet, it would match a digit, it would match any special symbol, it would match a comma, it will match anything, right? But we want to say, I want to put in something that says, we match only an alphabet, it won't match a number, or only a digit, won't match an alphabet. Those things are called character classes in, uh, in regular expressions, right? So for example, here we've got some strings, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, A, D, and then Jack Straw, and then Jill, 1, right? So remember that this is completely made up of alphabets. This is made up of alphabets and digits, and so is this, because this has got Jill and it's got a 1 at the end, okay? Now, the special uh, thing, backslash D, which of course would be backslash backslash D in our uh, actual usage, would match any digit. So for example, we are saying str underscore view, strs, which is this, uh, this vector, we are saying match it, uh, and we want to see anywhere if a digit occurs. 
So for a digit, we use a backslash D. And of course, we know that we're supposed to escape the backslash, so it's backslash backslash D. So if you did that, you see that it matches the first and the third. Uh, because Jack Straw doesn't have any digits anywhere. These two things have digits. And it's showing you the first match. And of course, as we've already discussed, stops with the first match. Clearly, it can also match two. It can also match three. But so long as it matches anywhere, say, well, that string meets the conditions. Okay, so backslash D matches any digit. Backslash S matches any white space. Right? A white space is a space, a tab, or a new line. New line meaning enter which has gone to a new line, right? Uh, so that's what it is. So if you've got a space, a tab, or a new line, that'll match. So here, notice that this is the only string that has a space. So that's the only one that should actually match, and there, there you go. Right? This has no space, this has no space, and of course, none of them has a, a tab or a new line. So that's what this is. Okay, so you can match that. Um, And sometimes you can provide alternatives to say, so long as it matches this or that. Okay, so again, we are using the same set of strings. And we are saying, uh, this is again character class. Uh, or we are saying, when you put it within square brackets, ABC, it means matches any one of these characters, right? Doesn't, we are not talking about ABC, all three of them. But you put it within square brackets, you are saying any one of them. Right? So here we see, uh, show me anything that has either A or B or C. So clearly that's only the first two. If this doesn't have an A or a B or a C, so then that will match those two. And of course, uh, within square brackets, if you put the caret character, then the meaning is slightly different. Remember, we used the caret character earlier to match beginning of the string, to match the beginning of the string. But here it's different because we're putting it within, uh, within the square bracket. And within the square bracket, the meaning it takes on is anything other than, right? It's like, it's like the minus sign that we used in our indexes and so on. So this is like anything other than ABC. That is, show me a string that has any character other than A, B, or C, and of course, which will mean all of them will match. So that, that all of them will match. You can also use the, the vertical bar, the type sign it's called, for choices, which is all. So, we are saying match within STRS anything that contains either the string BC1 or the string STR. Right? Uh, and of course, this uh, uh, the pipe has a very low precedence, so which means that all of these versus all of these, it's not BC and then 1 or S and TR. Okay, it's not that. It is BC1 or STR because it has a low precedence. Right? It's BC1 or STR. As I mentioned earlier, the pipe has a very low precedence. And if you want to have BC followed by 1 or S followed by TR, then you put this one bar, uh, one pipe S within parentheses. Right? So for example, if you want uh, to match anything which starts with a GRE, then has either an E or an A and a Y. Right? So the, the, if you didn't put the parentheses, it would mean GRE or AY. That's not what we want. We, all, we want GR, we, we want it to have GR, and then we want it to have Y. In between, it will either have an A or an E or an A. Okay, so in that case, we are using the parentheses simply because the vertical bar has a very low precedence. 